What's up, fanboys? Quick note here. This Wolverine movie review was originally episode number 9 of the Group Meeting podcast. We had it on our old YouTube channel, which was erroneously shut down by Google, and when they refused to reinstate it, we lost all of our old episodes except for this one and one other one that we had backed up, episode number 11. Since we relaunched the podcast and started back at episode number 1, this basically had no place in the current lineup. But because we're still proud of where we originally came from, we've decided to upload it and still give you access to it. Without further ado, here is the episode. Enjoy, everyone. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of the monthly roundtable discussion meeting podcast show. I'm going to shorten that one day, I swear to God, for Fanboys Anonymous. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, the owner-operator of FanboysAnonymous.com. With me for this roundtable discussion, we have Brandon Ligon. Yes, you do have Brandon Ligon, who shaved his facial hair into Wolverine sideburns just for this podcast. <laughs> that's not I thought you were going to say that you're like shaving downstairs into Wolverine no. sideburns. No, I just, I saw this movie so much and I went to go shave my facial hair. <laughs> that would be more, uh, more of a commitment. It's, it was, well, I mean, I was committed. <laughs> so what happens is you shouldn't get high and, and do facial hair work. <laughs> As you've heard, we also have Michael Burhan. Yes, I, I, you know that place Bed Bath & Beyond? I'm going to buy it one day so it could be like Bed Bath & Beyond & Burhan. <laughs> Just for the point I don't, like, I don't want to go to that section. I want to, I want to <laughs> boo that joke. File. File that. I do that jokes. <laughs> As a movie file? No. Oh. no. That was even worse. <laughs> oh, you're the worst person who ever lived. <laughs> and we also have Nikki Mills. I don't have anything witty or stupid to say, so I'm just going to say hi. What's up? <laughs> I like how the first thing's about witty for Ligon's comment, the second one's stupid for her hands. <laughs> She's only saying that because she thinks I'm awesome. Yeah, okay, right. Well, so that was a good joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and possibly in the background, we might have Sam Lassie. Are you with us, Sam? Sam, say hi. Did you yell hi? Eh. Did you hear it? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Sam's having technical difficulties of sleep right now, so he may be in and out of consciousness. And in and out of the podcast. Which, by the way, episode 9 is what we're on right now. And the topic at hand is the Wolverine. Both the movie and just kind of generic shit about the character. But more so the movie. We're going to talk about the movie. We all uh, saw that over the past few days. This is about the Wolverine? Shit, I thought this was about Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man, <laughs> you've done it again. You need to stop talking. <laughs> you manky well, can... You manky English git. What is wrong with you? <laughs> well, um, Nikki's. what's wrong with me? No comment. So a little bit of background behind this. Directed by James Mangold. And I have no idea what else he did uh, to kind of go into this. I mean, this was supposed to be directed by Darren Aronofsky. And he left the project for... I guess scheduling conflicts. I've heard both. Yeah, he didn't uh, want to be away from his family. Apparently, I've heard that as well as problems with like he wanted it to be like this hard R, and that Marvel and everybody else was just kind of like, no, <laughs> like it's not gonna fucking sell that way. Um, but who knows? Uh, I'm looking it up right now. James Mangold, he has also directed. He did uh, Night and Day with uh, Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz, which was a very good movie. Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash story. Identity, which I actually love. That movie mm -hmm. is one of the only horror movies that I actually own. So maybe that's uh, maybe that's why I actually kind of like this. Um, Kate and Leopold, which blue. <laughs> yeah, okay, I remember Identity. It, I just, I didn't know. It's one of those movies that sounded familiar, and then as soon as I hit the IMDb page, I remembered exactly what it was about. Yes, I did like that a lot i saw so, I, I remember gosh. when he did um kate and yeah. leopold and they coined, they coined it as the, the love, love story, story before, before romeo and juliet 
Sure. Exactly. The love story before <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Kate and Leopold. That That's supposedly cool. that supposedly inspired Shakespeare to write, or if you believe what people can cons- write, uh, conspire cry about that, the people that were William Shakespeare. No, but dude, Shakespeare, Shakespeare, Shakespeare plagiarized. He never wrote anything. Well, no. Then you got those people who believe that he wasn't actually one guy. He was a collective of people writing under a pen name. Hmm. Well, kind of like yeah. the kind of like the Onion, but done seriously. Maybe Kate and Leopold was the precursor to the Wolverine, since they both star Hugh Jackman. No segue. <laughs> oh god. Nicely done. I'm gonna pat myself in the back with that one. Yeah, you, you do that, that, Tony. You do yeah. that. Nobody else will. So I have to do it myself. I got plenty of treats right here. <laughs> Trust me. You might not like them though. So directed by James Mangold and written by Mark Bomback and Scott Frank, two other people that I have no idea or had no idea at the very least going into this what they had done. So I didn't go into this expecting it to be bad or good, depending on the people involved, other than you know who Jackman and all that. But uh Looking them up, I think I haven't seen anything that they've done either. I mean, um, oh, um get Bombac shorty. did, That's Bombac it. did uh, uh, the Total Recall remake, which wasn't terrible. Um, F- Scott Frank did Minority Report. He was a writer and second unit director on Minority Report. Uh, did Marley and Me? <laughs> I mean, I, I like that movie. Yeah, yeah, I know that movie definitely makes you feel things if you, you don't have a heart if you don't you know have a tingling uh during marley and me it also makes you what feel kind of tingling uh, a special <laughs> tingling down in the cockles of your in your chest maybe in the sub cockle area he's emphasizing on cockles too much yes it's a, it's a part of your chest okay don't look it up <laughs> The first time somebody mentioned Marley and me to me, and they were like, "It's about a dog," and, and I was like, "I'm not going to see it because You'll I know what's going to happen." Crying by the end of it, exactly. <laughs> they did totally last you that dog. <laughs> oh my god! It's like it's such it's such. Uh, I, I I couldn't watch it. I can't watch it. It's like I watched it once. I'm just like, oh, "It's my dog. I want my dog to die." <laughs> yeah, no. I I cried like a bitch too. I, hey man, everyone does it. I also just get really stoned, so it's like I just get one solitary tear that rolls down my face. <laughs> You're the Indian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Indian that cries, yeah. That's... <laughs> I got this during the Wolverine, too, ironically. You know what it is? It's because it's the rest of his like face is just really numb, so just one I, rolls so down. I, I have that permanent glassy eye thing to me, and like, like I was sitting down last week talking to my cousin, and like one just rolls down my eye, and my cousin goes, "Why are you crying?" I'm like, "No, I'm just really high." <laughs> yeah. You're like, I was thinking of Marley. I was thinking of Marley and me, man. I can't remember Wilson, man. Maybe he's such a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I thought he was Luke Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> the better one. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had I had to think. Did I get him right? I got I got him right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Owen Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't know Every fucking film, the same shit. <laughs> yeah, I was well, uh, just gonna be like Jesus Christ, you guys. <laughs> and I've got that really funny fucking nose thing going on there. Wow, we're totally we're totally off topic. Yeah, I was actually going to just start moving back to it. <laughs> trying to try and reel us in, Tony. Try and reel us in. Uh, Speaking of doses. Directed by and written by, but starring, we kind of can't do anything with that because most of these people are from the Japanese side of things or your whatever the fuck this person's name is. Fetlana Khodshenkova? I don't know. Sounds like that. That's sure. Uh, you're, you're taking my best guess at it because I can't even... Yeah. Kojakova, Kojakova, Kojakova. Let, let's just have a look here. Either way, she played the worst character in the whole fucking movie, so I don't care. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a debate with you about that one, hmm. but we'll go into that. So that's kind of a little bit of backstory behind this, uh, other than the fact that the story is based off of obviously not only the Wolverine character throughout the years, but the precursor to a lot of stuff that has happened in the comics. And they decided instead of doing a prequel, they were going to take this and do a sequel. This takes place, I think it's supposed to be 10 years after X-Men 3, right? Yes. Yes. And it 
Kind of doesn't seem like it because Hugh Jackman looks exactly the fucking same. Well, he's got the long hair and the beard. You know, it didn't. It doesn't. It was an unspecified amount of time. I thought mm-hmm. they really actually say, um, you know, because he's let his hair grow and obviously he's living in the woods, coming down for batteries. <laughs> I love the opening. I love the opening scene. His neighbor's like a bear. I like, like that bear. Which, uh, yeah. by the way, spoiler alerts to everybody who hasn't seen this movie yet. We are going to talk about things that happen during the movie. So if you haven't, uh, listen to this podcast after you have, because I recommend it. And it's not one of those movies where it's like, well, you're not missing anything, so let's just run it down. I do I think know, that's cool. I want to know who was the bear. Was it Bart the Bear from... Uh, I'm about to find that out right now. I'm trying to find out who the bear was. You mean like actor-wise? The, what bear it was, yes, because they had... Or it was a digital bear. It was a digital bear. It was a digital bear. Yes. Oh, because I kind of wanted. Was, it to there was be... no actual person in a bear suit. <laughs> no, I wanted it to be Bart the bear, the who was in an episode of Game of Thrones. No, got, it wasn't him. It, and he got his a... own title card. <laughs> Bart it was a digital bear. Bart it was the bear. Not... It was such an awesome thing because, like, you know, serious card cards then Bart the bear. <laughs> Uh, so the beginning of the movie, we're not going to run the, down the whole movie, you know, we're going to jump around and all that, but the beginning of the movie, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause that really, um, that kind of set the tone, I think really well when, uh, out of all the things that happen, Wolverine's found himself befriending a bear that funny enough, just takes a piss. It's like, <laughs> let's just have the bear piss scene and film that. And, uh, the hunters come by from around the area they poison the bear, the bear goes crazy, kills them, so they essentially go to kill the bear, and uh, it's up to Wolverine to kind of put it out of his misery. I actually really liked that. What did you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I love that whole scene. I, it, it set up, you know, how he's, you know, renounced killing since the, the events of the last movie, um, and how he's still, you know, troubled by having to kill Gene. Um, and you could, you, he felt he was really wrestling with the, uh, you know, does he go back to that life or not? And, uh, you know, it was a, he had a very touching emotional scene with a, a puppet basically. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's very was... few actors that could do that. It was very immersive. I think they, they had it down to a T how Logan was basically the, the fact that he, was totally um, depressed after killing the love of his life. He couldn't get over it. He was just living off the land and just felt like he deserved to be in the position that he was in. So it was a good way of doing it. The tone was uh, uh, excellent. And the dialogue with the bear, of course. The the bear, we all knew, though, that the funny thing that this bear was going to have something to happen to it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> immediately. As soon as the bear took a piss and didn't do anything to him, I'm like, either this bear is going to get fucking shot, or he's going to have to kill, like, some neighboring bear, and the bear's going to help him and die, or, like, something's not going to happen to this goddamn bear. Yeah. What did you think about that, Nikki? Wait, what? You're glitching out. The bear scene, the beginning of the movie. You're glitching out. Um, I thought... Well, at first I thought it was sad that they killed the fucking bear, obviously. That bear didn't do shit to anybody. Um, that bear would have raped the village. I, I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. I thought it was a little melodramatic at first, but then I thought it was kind of cool how, like, he just went in there and just kicked everyone's ass over the bear. Like, it was kind of like a companion, I suppose. I don't know. It was It was different, but at the same time, I accepted it. There's going to be a prequel movie to this. It's going to be The, the Wolverine and the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> now that Disney owns the Marvel stuff. Or it's the Marvel, it'll be the Marvel one shot. The bear I, I loved that one. fucking bear, okay? It's going to be the new Fox and the Hound. <laughs> Wolverine and the Bear. Logan and the Bear. Yes. <laughs> Logan and the Bear. Marvel one shot on the, the Wolverine Blu ray DVD thing. <laughs> or oh, Arrow in the Back, the Bear story. Oh. <laughs> Arrow. <laughs> that bear used to be an adventure, adventurer. Then it took an arrow to the back. <laughs> oh, I had you set me up, sir. I was waiting for somebody to do it. Yeah, I was gonna. It had to be me. 
So that leads us into Yukio comes into the bar and she takes Wolverine to Tokyo and uh, she tells him that the person who we saw in a flashback at the beginning of the movie during World War II when the bomb was dropped on Nagasaki it was, I think? Nagasaki, yes. That Wolverine saved this one soldier's life by throwing him down a well where he didn't get hurt at all. He felt like fucking, I don't know how many feet. And uh, standing over him while the backlash of the bomb kind of seeped away and um, he's kind of uh, been owed a life debt, which that in itself is something that I really, really liked a lot because that's something that's a part of that culture that really, uh, if you're going to do a different story, you got to go like completely fucking different. I hate when they do these kind of storylines and they go like, well, we're going to have say Batman in, um, the, I don't know, Batman in the medieval times. And then the only difference is he's wearing a shade, a different type of armor and it looks like medieval armor and the whole rest of the fucking story is the same. It's like, well then why'd you even bother? You got to do stuff that has to do with that, uh, surrounding environment. So them taking this whole Tokyo thing and having seppuku and life debts and all this honor system stuff to have a character that is built on kind of being, I don't know. Yeah. Would you classify Wolverine as being like that honorable killer? Uh, he's, he's in the, I always classify it as Wolverine sort of as the anti-hero or the reluctant hero. At least, you know, in some of the stories, certainly not the, you know, the animated series is kind of the, uh, <clears throat> gruff sidekick. Uh, but yeah, he does have some honor to him, you know, because it's like he says he's a he's always been a soldier his entire life, it, you know, that's just all he knows. So yes, he has some honor to him. I think if anything, he's one of those people that you can't depend on unless you have to depend on him. Yes, and that's kind of where the honor comes in. Cyclops is kind of a dick. Uh, you can depend on Cyclops. Unless there's something where it's like, psych, we really need you. And then he'll kind of be like, meh. <laughs> He's kind of an asshole like that. But I can't see Wolverine being the leader of any kind of a team. No. He's always he's always got to be the, the muscle. Um, well, quite the recently... Patience. Yeah, the patience well, definitely recently, the he is. Factor. recently he has done it with the comic books. They've, they've made him more into a mentor and the guy who's kind of realizing that the world's not as black and white, but I think before, yeah, you can say that. You can say that that's the character Wolverine was. He was kind of just the the killer. He would just go in there, do his job, be the best at what he did, and that's that. But now his ethos has kind of changed. You don't think that that's just kind of shoehorned though, because of his popularity? No, no. I th- I think he's gone through rather cosmetic. Um, it's not well cosmetic. It's more organic sort of change, uh, and it's a lot to do with people around him who have been dying. He was forced to kill his own son. You know, he did some horrible things to help Cyclops build a better future for the mutant kind, and then saw kids being thrown into the front line, and he had a problem with this. He was like, you know, kids need to be kids. They don't need to be going around killing people. And with the whole Phoenix saga, with everything like that, he lost a, a lot of people in his life from his, from those that he loved, like uh, his ex-wife and stuff like that, to everybody, you know. So Logan organically has changed into, he's not a pacifist by any means, but he's he's someone that he'll protect people around him. He understands the, the sense of family, I think. Hmm. But we're going to uh, jump forward as we kind of jumped back a little bit there in the storyline. Wolverine, when he heads over to Tokyo, he's been told that he is going to get the sword back from this person who later on in the movie we see them do the whole thing of here, take my sword and no, keep it, hold on to it, I'll get it later, that kind of a thing. And it turns out that instead, this guy is looking to give Wolverine the death that he feels like he wants. 
and in exchange, he'll take away his power, which is immediately, I don't know if you guys thought the same thing, immediately I just thought to myself, you're, you're really not really offering him that much. I mean, it would have been different if it would have been, I can figure out a way to kill you, and you're looking for the death, and that's it. But then he also kind of threw in that whole, like, plus I'll take your power. I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, you could tell his obsession with it. It was starting from there where he was becoming a bit desperate. He wanted, you know, this to happen. He wanted to make sure that he got um, this from Wolverine. I think it was quite clever as well because when he said it, I stood there and I thought, right, this guy's going to be the antagonist here. He's going to be the lead villain of this movie. But then when it changed, when he apparently died, I was just like, no, no, something's going to happen. And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, and I'm not going to, like, spoil anything as yet, but as the film progresses, you still know sign of him. You're sitting there thinking, okay, it, the word kind of is left lingering, it's left hanging, because you're sitting there thinking, right, why is all this happening? Do you know what I mean? Well, you never actually saw him die. All you saw was just them take him out of his house. They didn't, you know, cover him like you know, they would a normal body. So, you know, they, I thought they did that pretty well in that reveal. I mean, and if you knew anything about Wolverine's storyline, you, you knew that, you know, Yashida was Silver Samurai. I mean, yeah. You have to be an idiot. <laughs> not to, and you're certainly not listening to this podcast unless you already knew that right but when you go into this movie you kind of see the um <clears throat> shinjin Hi. and he's more so uh well this guy's going to do it like they're they're going to kind of pass the buck into that kind of a thing and it'll just be him you know they really they made it that whole angry son and uh, the, the pass the whole company yeah. down to the granddaughter like they really they focused on that enough to where I actually completely forgot about the old man yeah that, that was the same thing it kind of went into a different story I liked it I thought um, as a story itself it really really pushed forward the whole um, emphasis on, on the daughter on Mariko who's for those of you guys who don't know in the comic books, she's the mother of Wolverine's son, Dakin, and also the, the supposed love of his life. Now, um, I'm, I'm not going to go into details about what happened to her in the comics, but he did suffer a great loss from her. Um, so it was nice to have her in this movie to begin with. Uh, but in the comic book, she happened very earlier on, whereas... In this, they kind of moved her over to, like, uh, the latter years. They moved it to fit their movie timeline. Yeah, and it, 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 fa it actually fitted rather well. Yeah. Um, um, the whole story worked. It worked ingeniously. I liked the fact that she was reluctant to, to seize power. She didn't care about it. Mm -hmm. But everyone wanted to kill her because of it, you know? Um, her father, her own husband, well, her, her soon-to-be husband, her fiancé, she says... You know, everyone wanted to take it away from her because they felt that she was undeserving of it. It was an awesome way to introduce her. And I love the dynamic between her and Wolverine in there as well. He was trying to be a protector, trying to save her, make sure she didn't lose her life because he, he kind of had a thing for her. But she was just reluctant for anything. She didn't really give a shit. You yeah. know, until... I personally, and... Um... I kind of felt this way halfway through the movie, and then I was like, you know what, it's not changing my mind at all. I didn't like their romance. At all. That was, like, the one major flaw in this whole movie, I think, is... I mean, yeah, they in the I comics... I thought it was a little too rushed, personally. Like, one day she's, like, annoyed by his very existence, and then a second she's wanting to be all up on him. Yeah, and it kind of... It made it even worse that throughout the entire film, he's still thinking of Gene. And I know, like, he's supposed to be thinking of Gene because of this, this great love that he killed and all that. But it's like, he he has sex with Mariko, and literally, like, what you have to assume is maybe a couple hours later, maybe even less than that. He looks around at the opposite part of the bed, 
at Mariko, and it's like, oh, Gene, let me have a whole big discussion about the pe- person I really care about. Like, and then it's just uh, kind of from then on in, it's like this weird. Uh, I don't know. Like the the woman who has a crush on the her father's friend or something. Like it's just it was really odd. It was one of those things where I think he was because they even talked about the fact that he was hung up on her on on Jean, and I think he was kind of letting it cloud his judgment in terms of what he wanted. Um, he didn't really want to let himself get close to people because that, uh, you know, that's when bad things happen. And I think that's really the reason behind it, um, and not really a a pull point, so to speak. And I can understand it was kind of forced in a way, but it's kind of has that that same sort of premise of unwilling love story so to speak it's happened in a load of action movies and a load of different films where a girl hates the guy uh the guy is trying to save the girl and then the girl ends up falling in love with the guy eventually but it is look at another film that um that he directed night and day same premise well i never saw that movie it was all right well it was it amazing no. yeah it was and it was funny. I like, you know, Tom Cruise playing a comedy character never usually makes me laugh, but that did. Yeah, you put Cameron Diaz in a movie and it really makes me think twice she about it. She didn't that, talk it? much. No, she didn't talk much. So that that's what kind of sold it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's talk about the Jean Grey situation. Love that they got Famke Johnson back. But damn, she must have been pissed. She had about ten scenes of just laying down at a bed and that was it. <laughs> Well, that's all she really can do again. Again, they killed the character off, so, I mean, she's not going to do much. They technically killed the character off. I'm going to say this right now. We're going to probably be seeing her in the X-Men Days of Future Past or probably in a a separate X-Men movie after this. I do not believe that she, in any way, shape, or form, is dead. Um, If you go by the comic books, the character Gene, the Phoenix... Phoenix means resurrection. The fact that the character has been resurrected more than fucking once you know the fact that Jean's going to be back, but there is going to be a whole shitload of problems when she does make her comeback. I think the way they did it in here and used her in such a way to um, show Logan's guilt, because they, they, they gave her a tangible form because of the fact that, you know, uh, Jackman's awesome at invoking emotion. He understands the character better than anybody, probably better than any of us here. Um, in terms of who Wolverine is, but the fact that this guy is hung up on, yeah, he's like Batman in a sense. You know, there's a, a running gag going around when everybody says that what Bruce does when he falls in love with a girl, he ends up revealing his secret fucking identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wolverine's pretty much the same fucking thing. He falls in love rather quickly with anything and everything. Uh, and then the girl ends up getting killed, and then he feels like fucking remorse about he it. Goes, like, yeah, he has sleep. like a million and one different relationships, and you know he's he's got a stacked room full of women that that Logan has basically have been with, and it's hilarious sometimes because at, at certain points you're sitting there thinking, why is he acting like that? And at other times, you're trying to gain some rationale into why Wolverine is the way he is. Uh, and and the factoid is, he's just the way the character's been written. And in the comic books, it just seems really insane as well. He's always hung up on somebody. And this at this point, though, he does admit that Jean Grey was his like first true love and his basically his only love, so to speak. Uh, the only person that he actually had this physical or mental bond with, even though she was in love with somebody else. Which, by the way, do you? What do you guys think about that? I actually hate the idea of Emma Frost and Cyclops together. I think Cyclops and Jean Grey, Jean Grey tempted by Wolverine. Wolverine does not get Jean Grey. That's my. If I do an overall perspective, give Wolverine somebody else, make up a new character, or uh, you know something along those lines. I don't think the Jean and Wolverine thing makes sense. The same as I don't think Emma Frost and Psych. Yeah, thing. I completely agree. You you don't see the the whole reasoning behind it. 
Cyclops is using Emma Frost because she's a telepath, just like Jean. No, but I mean in the like in the end game. Oh, you mean in the comics in general or uh, the story? The, the thing is, if you look at the comics in the way that they have done at the moment, he's never been over Jean either. And after this whole sort of, um, the, like, when they got the Phoenix and the Avengers versus X-Men thing happen, Emma Frost is basically friends with benefits with Cycle. She's not even friends with him. They're just, they're, they're two good people that just screw because of the fact that she has a bit of an emotional attachment to him, and Cyclops is just like, and Jean. Mm-hmm. Now, that makes perfect sense it. to me. I mean, when you when you boil it all down, and if you were to write, like, like how I've said before, I, I think if you have somebody who is supposed to be, like, the main love for Batman, a lot of people think Talia, I think Selina, and if it comes to Jean Grey, Jean Grey has to end up with Cyclops. Yeah, it, it happened. If you've, you know, been a huge X-Men fan like I am, um, they ultimately got married. You remember he married her clone. They had Cable, um, you know, Nathan Summers. We end up ter- finding out that um, Madeline Pryor, who is basically Jean's clone, ends up going freaking psycho, and then she dies, and then Jean comes back from the freaking dead. They have their relationship rekindled. They get married. They go forward in time to try and save their son, <laughs> or Cyclops' insanity. son. Then they come, you know, they go it through... It gets fucking issues. convoluted, really. Yeah, it's... and then you, you, she ends up back with the Dark Phoenix again and then ends up dying, saving everybody's lives. And boom, we're back to ABC again. And that's how the relationship develops. She died being the wife of Cyclops and, you know, being the one for him. Yeah, she had her thing going on with Wolverine, but... So... It's the animal. You can't, you can't resist the animal passion of Logan. Hey, I couldn't resist Wolverine, man. If he was in this room right now, I'd be banging. I have Wolverine sideburns. What's up? Congratulations. How are you doing? Mickey swoons. <laughs> all I they, can tell. All they, they all do. Yeah. I can, I can, I can, put, put, a, I can put a cigar front. in my mouth, too. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Nicky can, too. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes a cigar is a good cigar, and other times a cigar is a big black dick. What the hell have you been doing? That's George Carlin, man. You ever, never heard of him? He was a comedian. I was just saying, have you been hanging out at prison yards or something? Yeah, there was no scene in the movie that <laughs> depicted that. Oh, <so. laughs> well, I know, but... Yo, Maybe it was a deleted broken. scene. Maybe that's why they didn't get the hard R rating. <laughs> Maybe I went to a different movie than you guys. <laughs> Wolverine the porno. Yeah, we can see it now. That that probably will happen at some point. <laughs> that was Wolverine and the big black bear. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> it had to be done. It had to be done. Oh god. We're moving on though from that point. Uh what other... just said, you know, Wolverine and a big fat, you know, bearded guy. Bear? No? Okay. <laughs> moving on. Try to do that battle. Uh... I know. I, if I criticize the unnecessary romance and I criticize Jean Grey to an extent, even though I really am glad that they added her in there, it would have sucked if they didn't. He would have just kind of been pining over Jean and she wouldn't have shown up in any capacity. As I said, they carried on the narrative from a really bad movie and turned the concept of that story into a really good movie. But there's, uh, there is one thing that made me think, oh my god, this is so fucking stupid in this movie. And that is the character of Viper. I fucking hated this character. She was pointless. This character exists as a doctor that is working on Yoshida. And she can turn into a fucking snake. And she has this like toxic breath and spit and whatever. And she can... Stop mutants powers. I, I thought that was Yeah, weird. like something like that or whatever and I don't know. She part. didn't stop the mutant powers. It's the cybernetic fish things oh, that okay. they I inhibited his saliva. powers. I thought it was something with her saliva. No no, she used her body as a way to sort of inject that thing in there. Now I can the reason why I think she was a good enemy, Tony, and to, to play devil's advocate here, was they needed um sort of a 
that because basically we knew Yoshida wasn't going to be like roaming around anytime soon. So they needed someone to to hold the sidelines together and, and keep everything going. Yes, her face looked like a fucking car here. I agree with you on that. Yes, she just like they're trying to play sex appeal with this character when it's she's my, not at all. My really. my issue with her, she sounded kind of she was, it was either forced or it was stale. If that makes sense. For yeah. It was, it, what? For all of her lines, like you mean just the actress in general? Um, a little bit of both. The lines felt too forced. She felt too forced, and it wasn't giving enough power. It just kind of like yeah. she would try to intimidate. It would go up and up, and then just plateau, and it sounded stale and impressed, and I didn't like it. No, I agree with you on that, and I think that the whole thing about her character was, I believe she was modeled on an individual named Typhoid Mary. Who came from the Daredevil comics? She had cyanetic powers, but she was also very like she could poison someone basically with her abilities. Um, and she was a Wolverine. She she kind of was an antagonist for Wolverine uh, as well, you know. Um, and I believe the char- this character was modeled off of her in a sense, but was taken to the next level where basically she had all these toxins and stuff in her body um to the point where she could just kill you just by kissing you you know um and i i totally agree with nikki she she tried to be powerful but her body language the way she acted the way that she was in her scenes she didn't necessarily steal the show she just seemed as like another henchman if that makes sense if you put her in the background she wouldn't have mattered as much I felt that they gave her a bit too much screen time. I hate, you know, actors, you can never give them too much screen time, but I think they gave her a bit too much screen time because they were desperate for someone to to be running around the background pulling the strings, but we never knew why. Well, these are the problems that I have with her. Uh, more so twofold than anything else. One, I agree with the acting. Crap. Uh... Yeah, I'm certainly not the best ba- actor in the world, but she felt and looked and carried herself like she was like a, a failed TV actress or something. Like she would have been a perfect example of some shitty villain for one episode of Smallville than for a focal point of a pretty big movie. Um, so I'm also pretty sure this is her first movie that she ever did in English. She was in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, but from what I remember, their character was her. She didn't really talk much. It was more just images. Um, <coughs> and then they <coughs> shot her in the head. Um, <laughs> they should have done that again. very early on in this movie. So I understand why, how you could feel that way. So, you know, English is clearly not her natural acting language. She's, again, as I said, she's not the best character actor out there. I think she was probably chosen mostly because of her looks than anything else. Yeah. I I thought the concept of her was cool. Yes. Yeah. Like, the concept of her, she'd be pretty fucking badass. It's just bad acting. Well, the concept with her is something else that bothered me, too, because I would have been perfectly fine with the whole toxin thing, but why is she turning into a fucking snake? Like, she literally, she rips her face off, and she's, like, shedding, and she's got that weird fucking tongue, and, like, that to me was, like, uh, like, they decided that they, they needed at least one more true mutant in the movie, and they had, uh, Yukio who had kind of, like, precog powers. By the way, it's Yuriko. Yuriko? Did I say Yukio? Yeah. Uh, Whatever it is. Uh, Fukushima is the actress's name. She had the precog powers, but when you look at that, you can't really sell that as a movie like like you can uh, by showing fucking Snake Woman. Like, you know, it's that kind of, that cheesy factor of, well, Wolverine's got these claws. You, you have him pop the claws out, any 
person that's watching this movie trailer knows exactly that he's some fucking dude with claws and all that. And if you have that character and she's like, oh, I can see the future. Oh, well, no, you're just an Asian girl. Like, they, that's no special kind of separation. But then you have, oh, this is, and there's Snake Woman on this movie. Then there's these B-movie people that would like the movie or whatever. And there's these people that would go to see it because they're like, oh, snake people. And like, it just seemed like this weird fucking choice in my mind. Like, if they would have just had a normal character that was a doctor and knew toxic stuff because she was toxic, I'd have had mm-hmm. no problem with that. And except for the fact that she was just a bad actress. <laughs> I think as well, the fact is, her role could have been taken up by anybody. Um, there were more powerful women actor actresses out there that could actually convened or conveyed her character as well, which made her rather irrelevant. Um, and that's the problem. When you take something that's looking, that it was written on paper as a small role and try to make it bigger to flesh out the story, it makes things a little too complicated um, in terms of what you're doing. You know, um, with her character, so to speak, she, it could have worked, it would have worked, but in the end, she just seemed like a female toad. Yeah, that's a really good analogy. <laughs> you know, I feel like if the, the concept of the viper, whatever the fuck she was, a viper, half viper, want to be viper i don't care the concept of it was cool and if they made if like if they just put it in a different perspective with a different actress the fact that she could have been she could have been fucking medusa i don't care i thought the concept would be cool but they just it, it, it was just one slight mistake that completely made it sour for me now, and that was that was the actor now in the graphic novel that this is based on isn't that role kind of played by Madam Viper? For those uh, that are familiar? Because uh, I would see, say she's more closer to Typhoid or, Mary. Not Madam Viper. Uh, Madam Hydra? Uh, not really, because she's not mutant. No, but isn't that that whole... Um, the woman what? watching after... Sexy. Kind of manipulating the scenes. Isn't that kind of... I don't remember correctly. I, I vaguely... Uh, if you're talking about Hydra, then yes. Yeah, Madam Hydra, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, but in terms of mutants, there's a lot... More, there, there was like a million and a half different mutants you could have put in that role. Um, Mystique's another one that could have done it rather easily. You don't... You don't have to manipulate Wolverine as such. You know, he could have even had that, that whole thing where he's kissing Jean Grey and, you know, next minute bam you've got like someone's morphing in uh like you you have someone with the power of uh shape-shifting or you have someone with telekinesis that could have easily just manipulated him as well you did need her in that role but i believe that the majority of of having her in that was just because of the fact that they didn't want to reveal the main villain till later that's what it was but you still had this ongoing story between the the father, Mariko's father, Mariko's husband, and all these other individuals that were in it. You had the, this other guy, um, I believe he was from uh, the Fast and Furious movies. Am I right? Who? Uh, you know the dude with the arrows? Um, I forgot what his name was. He was Mariko's like, ex-boyfriend. Uh, Harada. Or, um... Yeah, and but he was played by the guy who was in the Fast and Furious movies. He was in Tokyo Drift, I, I believe, and, and all the other ones. Like Japanese, guy. Japanese guy in Tokyo Drift, you don't say. Yeah. Harada, yeah. Will Yun Lee. Yeah, that's it, Will Yun Lee. Um, he was also and, an extra, too. But he's literally, I thought, it was actually quite funny as well. They, they mirrored the, the clan in that, the black, what, what were they called? The black, um, the black clan? Mm-hmm. They mirrored these guys in the black hand which were Daredevil characters. That's why I was actually looking at Viper, and when I I looked at her, it actually reminded me of Typhoid Mary rather than Madame Hydra, who was also named Viper. So from there, it started to come together. Like, okay, they've taken elements of Daredevil and used this in this movie. I could see that. But they had to change some character names, like the Black Clan, because if they said Black Hand... 
the character and his rights have gone back to Marvel, so they can't use that in this, and hence the the whole taking those, you know, changing a few little bits and pieces. But it really it, it it's looked more like a story um, that would have been more suited to Daredevil in that sense because they they had all these ninjas running around, and I, I could just see like we need loads of ninjas. What are we going to call them? Um, the foot well, clan. <laughs> Yeah, they're on the black hand. Oh, we can't do that because Daredevil's gone back to them. Uh, how about we call the Black Clan? Yeah, that will work. No one's going to realize. That's mm. generic enough. Yeah. <laughs> so hence that's happened. But I can I can see what they did, and it's it's fine. Again, it worked. But he could have been a a, a main character there. He could have played his role from the get go. You know, she didn't need to be there. They just added her there because they needed a bit of tits and arse for people to go, my God, I would bang that. Mm. You know, and hence the reason why I don't feel she knew her character as well. If you're going to go into the whole Meisner thing and how you're supposed to encompass your character and understand your character and build your character story, she had no fucking clue. She was just spouting lines. Well, out of the big things in the movie that I didn't like... Those were the main things. There, before we start getting into like you know, dragging down like positives and everything like that, is there anything else that people saw as like a glaring flaw in the movie? Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was one thing that actually made me laugh, and I was having this discussion with Jeff Croup today about this as well, because <clears throat> he was going like, um, you know, he's got bone claws. How comes Magneto was able to? Um, make him sort of stay still and all. And I'll just laugh and I was like, he's still got the adamantium in his yeah. body. He's just the the top of the claws are gone. And when he regenerated, there were bone claws. My issue with this was it. There in in the Marvel universe sense, it didn't make sense. But as the film in general, as a separate entity, it made sense. It kind of bothered me a little bit. I. I'm not a fan of the bone claws. I don't like bone claws. I think Wolverine with the bone claws looks really silly in comparison to him with the adamantium. But that's my thing. Apart from that, the movie did its thing. It, it was really well done. Um, uh, but we can we can save the whole you know overall retrospective on that later. He didn't have the normal claws back at the end. I thought he did. No, that's just bone. There were the bone claws at the end. Yeah. Yeah. But his whole body is laced with adamantium still. The, the thing is, behind the blown claws, if you if you want to go into detail with it in the comic books, Wolverine had his adamantium in his body ripped out by Magneto, which nearly destroyed his body and turned him feral um, to the point where uh, apparently there was something with the adamantium that was keeping him in check from devolving into this animalistic creature. And then something happens and he ends up getting back to normal and fighting it. Um, uh, and then eventually gets his adamantium claws and everything back when Apocalypse grabs him and turns him into Death, one of his horsemen. So there you go. Hmm. The story there from comics. See, I thought that he had it. I mean, that you know, it happens kind of so fast that you're too busy looking at the other stuff. I thought that he yeah, had you it back. Can't, no, no, you can't grab back the adamantium claws, and uh, they, they showed that. He had, um, you know, the bone claw still. I just kind of figured that the, they, well, you know, we're kind of uh, jumping to that. Um, they say it's a two-year gap. I figured maybe, because, you know, if I did uh, not pay attention to the fact that it was still bone claws, so I just kind of went, oh, then the two years, then, that, you know, something happened, you know. Well, let me ask you guys a question. Do you know who Yuriko Makashima is? Who? I mean, I don't mean just the character in this, in the movie, the one who was running around, who was protecting him, and... Who could I, visualize people's deaths? Do you know who I, she? I is vaguely the remember the character from the the animated series, um, but I can't remember you know much about. It. I know there was like some sort of history between the two of them. She was the sister of Mariko. You will, uh, yeah, the adopted sister. Yes. Yeah, uh, and also she was Wolverine's lover uh, at one point as well. Yeah, I knew they had a history because there was. I remember from the animated series. So- she yeah. saw Wolverine kill her sister, mm. um, but it wasn't him. If we want to go into whole details about it, apparently some say it was Saber Tooth. It was like revealed that it was a different uh, individual who 
was controlling Wolverine's life from the get go. I can't remember what his name was. I, I'll probably we'll go to Wikipedia that and get get a hold of that guy's name. Um, but she then later got her body transformed, um, combined with like technology and stuff, and became Lady Deathstrike. Hmm. And, yes. Yeah, you know, with her and the Reavers, and they went after him and tried to like basically do everything they could kill him. Her body was laced with adamantium, but she also had like tech and stuff, so her legs could fucking sprout out and all that. She had claws coming out of her hands and fingertips. Yeah. It was disturbing. We were talking about Yuriko, not Yukio. They're not the same character. She is actually the same character. Not according to their names. It's Yukio in the movie. Is it Yukio? Yukio. Yukio in the movie, yeah. Yeah, but modeled on the same character, though. Yeah. I'll, I'll wiki you uh, in our own chat. <laughs> Yukio, then Lady Deathstrike is Yuriko Oyama. I'm probably screwing that up. <laughs> no, it was close enough. <laughs> there we go. The more you know. There's that little star going above my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> So that was one of the main flaws that you saw was the the bone claw switch. Um, that yeah, that's, a big that's, fan of that. that was my my big thing. I don't. The, the thing is, him having bone claws and basically having the rest of his body as adamantium uh, that irks me a bit. I I feel it doesn't work as much, and I did like the whole aspect of have, making him killable in this movie. So that his healing factor didn't. It took its fucking damn time to heal him when he was dying and him wanting to die. It, it was a great little aspect to it. Great little snippet. The whole silver samurai trying to steal his healing factor. I didn't understand about that, but again, there is a logical explanation about it because they did use. I don't know if it was him or Sabretooth's healing factor when he was in the Weapon X program, and they gave that to Deadpool. So they did do a transfer there. So. Well, that one of, that makes me um, reminds me of one other point that I uh, I had completely forgotten about before. Mm-hmm. Yoshida wants to take the healing factor away, so he drills out the adamantium. <coughs> yeah. Uh, since when was adamantium the healing factor? I think he just no, wants no, no. adamantium, just because I because remember they said he's been stockpiling anima- adamantium, so I just think no, he was... no, it wasn't that. That's that's actually kind of wrong. He, what he did is carved the adamantium bone. And then drilled into the bone that was inside the adamantium, so he could like suck the freaking healing factor out of his body. That needed a bit more explanation, I think. I think if they revealed their process a little bit more, it would have made a lot more sense. Instead, they just went a bit more gun ho about it. Yeah, because to me, I was like, well, if he's trying to get to like DNA, just get out of his fucking skin. He's right there, yeah. like you know what I mean. So I was like, there has yeah. to be something else to this that I'm not seeing. Maybe that was part of the mutant genome. I, I don't know. I don't know why they why they did that. That didn't make sense to me either. I, I felt that they could have explained it a lot more. Because if, if you need his blood, all you got to do is shoot him and he's got blood coming out. He doesn't, like, he's not like mm. Superman where shit bounces off of him. So I was like, well, maybe there's something with the adamantium that I have never come across in the comics that I've read. Because you're yeah. saying it's it's up to the adamantium thing. The only reason I'm still alive is this adamantium suit. And I'm like, uh, okay, metal is keeping you alive. Like, uh, did you get me? Uh, again, it, it didn't make it much vibrant. sense. I, I felt it didn't make much sense at all. Um, in terms of the, the way that they did it, I, as I said, they needed to explain the process a lot more. Um, in terms of the the way it was done in the the Deadpool comics, they never explained their process there either. They just said that they used um, some of Wolverine's DNA to give, oh, was it Wolverine or say one or the other to give Wade Wilson the um, healing factor to jumpstart his body, and then it was fighting against the cancer. It also turned him a bit nuts though. So, but in a sense, I don't know. They, they need to explain themselves. It was good. I understood why that this guy's obsession, it really worked. And I have to say as well, with a lot of Japanese actors that were in this movie, they really grasped their characters rather well in this. Because usually when you add a foreign actor into a film, 
when it comes to actually not doing a film that's in their language and doing a film in English, you don't tend to get that same um, characterization of them, the, the same invoke, you know, the way that they invoke emotion and portray their characters as they do in their own language. But this was it was done really well. But yeah, no, I agree with you on that, Tony. Hmm. I do totally agree with you on that. Hint, hint, director's cut when that comes out, they'll probably do that. Maybe, I don't know. There is supposed to be a director's cut that actually is rated R. So, I mean, there has to be deleted scenes in that, obviously. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, it, it seems like there was a lot um, that could have been cut out for this movie just for time, in fact. Because this was already two hours and six minutes, so... There could have been some stuff that they explained a little bit more in depth that was just cut for time. Because, you know, no one wants to be in a movie for two and a half, three hours. I would. <laughs> I mean, well, how, I don't know about Most you guys. There don't. was a lot of trailers before this movie started. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Bloody heck. Yeah, there was. I, a, I, I sat for about half an hour's worth of trailers before I got to this movie. Yeah. Um, See, I actually. I'm the type of person that goes like well in advance before a movie and I ran late on this one. So I got through where there was only two trailers beforehand. So I I guess I skipped them all. Yeah, you missed you missed. I mean there were some good ones, you know. I didn't I didn't see a whole lot of trailers. Did uh, you? I, I I did. Before Wolverine. Yeah, there were a decent number. I didn't think so. I thought there were more trailers than Wolverine. It seemed like a lot. I'll tell you what had a lot of trailers in front of it was Turbo. I just watched that the other day. About 15, I think. Um, we, we're not going to go into Turbo and how that movie sucked, are we? No, nah, I thought it was kind of cute, but you know, we're talking about something completely opposite. So <laughs> Let's talk about the little snail instead of Wolverine killing people. And Oh, by the way, yeah, that's something to talk about there. A lot of people died in this movie, which, thank God. I hate it when they just don't show him actually fucking stabbing somebody. Because... That's something that bothers me in a lot of these different things, and it's something that always bothered me with Ninja Turtles, where unless you're doing that version of Ninja Turtles where the Foot Clan is a bunch of robots, which is a little bit weird, you've got this guy with swords, and he's just stabbing people left and right. Like You have to kind of make it seem like more brutal when that's the actual brutality of it. So I loved how in this movie... He's just stabbing people in the heart. He was stabbing people, and it was like, boom, they are dropping to the floor dead, because that's exactly how it should yeah. happen. There wasn't that crap where he was, like, slicing around them, and they were just kind of, like, flipping and laying down and no blood anywhere and all that. Not to say that I wanted it to be Kill Bill bloody or anything like that, but they didn't... Uh, they didn't tone it down to a ridiculous level. Yeah. So kudos. Uh, again, I, I think, in a sense, they made it to the point where he was going... Because this movie is going to have ninjas coming out of the fucking anus. Of course he's going to be around killing people. There was Yakuza getting sliced up. You had people just... I, I would have loved to see a bit more limbs becoming loose from people's bodies. <laughs> But, well, you know, they, they basically got it into a 12A, so of course that's not going to happen. Um, it, it was good for what it was. I loved the fight scenes, especially the one on the bullet train. Yeah, I love that too. That was really, really well done. You know, and um, it, it was beautiful. I thought, I thought the, the fight scenes, the way it was done, and also the fact, you notice they, they limited him a lot in this movie because they made him... Um, to the point where he was getting shot at, he was getting taken down. He just, he had to use a lot more in terms of his sense than anything else. And, you know, it showed him getting slowed down and stuff as well. It was, it was good. It was really, really good. I loved the fight scenes. And actually, um, in terms of the action, this movie had everything in terms of action. I really liked the bullet train scene too. I, um, it's very rare that they can do a scene in a movie that's action based that you oh, haven't actually, really was that right, go ahead go ahead well, it's it's rare that you see an action scene in a movie where it's built around a premise that you don't really see all the time i mean how many times can you see a couple char, uh, cars chasing each other and somebody hanging out of the car or people 
in like if they would have even just been in a train and somebody trying to throw them out of a train we've seen that a bunch of times this having a whole you know jumping up and avoiding the uh the the signs and everything like that and having the knives that are holding you onto the train and all that i thought that was actually pretty cool I, I liked it, but there was one point at that at that scene. I was like, "All right, just get on with it already." It it was cool, and I liked how he basically psyched him out to get him off of the bullet train. I thought that was funny, but there was one point where I'm like, "All right, just just find a way to kill him," because it it did take a little a little too long for my liking. I can um, see that, but I I did think it was pretty clever. I did like the bullet tra- train scene for that aspect. It was a different. You haven't really seen that, and like I said, I liked whenever Logan was like, hmm, and just kind of like pretends to jump up, and the guy jumps up, and he just gets basically pelted. So I thought that was, I thought it was clever, but it was a little elongated. Now, what did you think about that, Brandon? Uh, yeah, I think they played that a little, went a little too long with it. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie overall. So I, I there's I really don't have much to say bad. I think I don't have much to say bad with it because Origins was such it was so terrible, shitty. Terrible We're not movie. gonna talk about Origins. Yeah, I think I really that's why my opinions of it is so are is so high, is because Origins was so terrible. So I'm just like, oh, at least it wasn't Origins. At least there wasn't fucking Gambit twirling his staff around like a helicopter. At least it wasn't that shit they called Deadpool in there. Fucking yeah, okay. I yeah. almost had a stroke in the middle of the theater. <laughs> so did one. Um, oh, don't get me wrong. My favorite yeah. part of the entire movie was Wade Wilson. Wade yeah. Wilson was yeah. so perfect. But Deadpool, I literally felt like a brain aneurysm forming. <laughs> yeah. It's so fucking awful. That movie could have been so great, too. I, I, didn't, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to bring up the unmentionable, but... <laughs> Because we'll go off on fucking whole other tangents. Yeah. Uh, well, you said that there was nothing really on the negative side. Yeah, um, I mean, I thought times I thought it really like they were too bogged down in villains. Like at one time, everyone's a villain. Uh, like there's the Yakuza. There's, uh, you know, Shingen himself was a, a, was the bad guy. Uh, then, you know... Everyone uh, other than Yukio and Mariko. <laughs> Everyone other than Yukio and Mariko and Wolverine was... A, was well, a there was that one bit. point where they were trying to tease that Mariko was going to be the bad guy. If you remember, when they when I had the scene with her in front of the samurai, and then Viper was telling her that it was her destiny to take over the clan, and... Yeah. You know, it was, there, were, there was a way that they were doing it. And I think I love the fact that they swerved everybody constantly in this movie. You couldn't pinpoint who the actual villain was, which was great. You had so many arseholes in this movie, but you never had one pinpoint. I don't know. I kind of felt like it could have been the grandfather because, like, it cause he just came up so unexpected. You, know, you had the whole Tokyo thing going on. And, like, all of a sudden, randomly, he just died. They don't really give him a lot of time on screen. He just, he's dead. And then nothing else was really played on about him so I'm like they could have gone into a little more detail on why he just died the next day there was a funeral and then the uh the actors is there I, it made me feel a little a little sketchy it, it, I, I I felt really weird about it and then whenever he was in the samurai suit I honestly I wasn't surprised whatsoever let's talk about that a little bit the idea of taking the silver samurai which as far as I know, in every incarnation of the comic books, it is somebody in like a, a normal adamantium suit. I don't remember it being more robotic. Has it been in other incarnations? Uh, no, in any other thing I've been, it's usually just been a normal guy in just super strong armor. Uh, but you know, ever since Iron Man, you know, everything has kind of gotten upscale in the Marvel universe. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I have no problem with that. Again, it wasn't Origins, so... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had no issue with it either. It, to me, it kind of looked like Ed 209 from Robocop. <laughs> I, I, I thought was... it... <clears throat> Go on. Go ahead, Burhan. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, it did seem like this big, over-emphasized tank of a thing. I was expecting the, the whole freaking um, helmet to, like end up peeling back and then just have the grandfather 
on a bloody screen or projected in 3D or some shit. Mm. Uh, it, that, that's what it looked to me because it looked really clunky. But then when you actually see this little man inside this big thing, I, I couldn't help but laugh as well at the same time. Well, the first, sense, thing, the first thing that I was thinking was Terrence Howard was going to look at it and go, next time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I I like this too, honestly. I thought it was kind of cool. The only part that made me feel that it was cheesy, honestly, was because of um whatever the Viper bitches, what whatever she was, she was making it out to be so over dramatic, and I, it made me feel that way. It made me feel like, oh, this big adamantium suit. Oh my God, it's gonna get you. And it, it was cheesy at first, up until when she died. When she yeah. had, uh, when she had passed. After that, I was like, all right. The, 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 I thought the battle between Logan and, um, and the Silver Samurai. I thought it was pretty cool. After that, I, I think do... it was. I think that part made me feel mainly because of her. I do think though that um, between the two, I guess you could say between the two sel- uh, Silver Samurai fights, because when he fights Shinjin, I thought that one was actually a little bit better. What do you guys think? Uh, I thought well, the Shingen fight was certainly a more choreographed number. Um, so yeah, I, I'll agree. Um, God damn it, what's like I always forget the guy's name, and I love him as an actor. Uh, Hiroyuki Sanada uh, is a one of my favorite Japanese actors. Has been in a lot of good things. Um, so yeah, I, I I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but I, I did like how when Logan finally figured out how to use the sword, uh, he you know said Japanese sword used two hands. And he puts a second hand on it and then it you know heats up. I thought that was kind of cool. I like that a lot. Of, that was my favorite part of that fight scene. Nice as little a, foreshadowing. As a, and as a fan of samurai swords, yes, Japanese swords use two hands. They don't light up uh, when you do it though, right? No, unfortunately, not yet. Someday, the swords will light up when I when I touch them. What were you saying, Burhan? I didn't have um, an issue with this. It just the one thing that was on my mind constantly about this was how can adamantium chop off adamantium? It's heated adamantium. Mm, it's still under a sense. It was like. So when he stabs uh, Mariko's ex-boyfriend with the sword mm-hmm. and it's heated, the dude doesn't like slice up or anything. He just stands there. Well, I think he, he like I out. thought he like slides down it and like it's like kind of like eviscerating him. I thought that was kind of yeah, but it's like heated, so it would have basically just dried the blood up, wouldn't it? Yeah, I suppose. That's uh, me being a technical fuck. Yeah, uh, it's you being from... really, it's you being really sciency. I think that's them trying to avoid splitting a human head down yeah. in half. Yeah, that's so. There sick. goes our twelve rating. Yeah, right. <laughs> Going right for that hard R that he wanted. I tell you what, though, that would have been fucking awesome if they would have like, just, you know, just... as much as they had like people getting you know stabbed in the throat and all that throughout the movie. If they would have just done that, it would have been like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> holy shit, that's kind of going crazy. Hmm. I don't like it though. Um, even better if they would have killed off uh, Viper that way. <laughs> just get her in the beginning of the movie. Just slice her in half and be like, "This character sucks," and move on to something else. You know, it it does make me laugh because it's the the whole sense with her as well. You know where she ends up getting stabbed, and then she peels her skin off, and then <laughs> Yukio grabs her, ties her up with cables, and then hangs her. You're like, what okay, what was the point? What was the point of that? I actually thought it was pretty cool. I mean, like within five seconds, her neck was snapped, and I was like, "All right, that, that was kind of awesome." Yeah, but she's been stabbed with a sword, but yeah, has no blemishes in her body after pinning the skin off, but then gets her neck stabbed afterwards. It was like you should have just killed her once. She didn't need to kill her twice. Maybe she should have been a cat, and they could have killed her uh, nine different times. Yeah. Just go up to heaven with a punch card. <laughs> well, Nikki, is there anything that was like a glaring flaw in your mind? Um, mainly just the Viper Lady. Any kind of one thing that we haven't talked about that was like 
Bah, that was uh, awesome. That was awesome? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I thought we were talking about things we were still irked about. Um, things that were awesome. I think the moment whenever um, Martha's father came in while Logan was sitting on the, uh, on the bed and he's trying to get that thing out of his heart, I just thought that whole thing was actually pretty badass because, I mean, imagine how much pain he's going through. And he, in the, like, the corner, in his peripheral, he knows that he could die either way. I thought it was kind of, like, I don't know, it got me on edge. Did you think that she was going to die in that scene? Because I did. That she was going to die? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I did. I knew, I knew Logan wasn't going to die, obviously, but I honestly thought that, uh, that she was going to die. And also, um, whenever Mariko's father tries to kill Logan afterwards, and after he got the thing out and he has his definitive state back and he's like acting like this little cocky fucker trying to kill him and then realizes he can heal again. Like just the look of fear terror fell across his face and it gave me such joy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you two guys think about that? Did you think that Yukio was going to die in that scene? No. no. I knew he was going to stick around. Hmm. <laughs> All right, well, then it was just the two of us that were like, yeah. oh, maybe she's going to die. No, I kind of uh, figured she was going to stick around. I was actually waiting for Mariko to die, but that wasn't going to Yeah, happen. I, I thought if anyone was going to die, it was definitely going to be her, but I, 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 was not, I was not anticipating her death at all. Hmm. And I would have been, been sad had she died, because I thought she did a very good job. Um, what's her name? Fukujama. <laughs> Fukushima. Fukushima. Like the nuclear reactor. <laughs> that would explain the hair. Rilla Fukushima. I mean, I can, don't know what else she is in, but definitely I will go watch it. Well, there's one big thing that we, we talked a little bit about, but uh, we haven't completely blown it out there, and that's the post credit sequence. Uh... Which was awesome. Yes. Fucking, yeah, just, uh, that was... If you tell somebody there's a post-credit sequence of somebody in an airport talking to somebody, well, that that doesn't sound that great in a movie that's got people with uh, metal claws and, you know, jumping around and ninjas and all that other kind of stuff. It would be like, what? But that was maybe my favorite scene of the whole thing. Um... I was definitely it definitely ranks as far as all time you know uh, Marvel post credit scenes, uh, just because it it has you know Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen in it, so yeah, it was great. I I, I knew it was coming, and I still was on the edge of my seat. Actually, I, didn't I thought, know I thought there was, was something coming. else too. I thought there was something else after it. Like I thought there was uh, you know. I stupidly stayed to the end of the credits credits. So did I. Yeah, it's like, oh, maybe there's more. Oh, no, there's not. No shawarma? No shawarma. <laughs> there is one thing about that scene, though, that I was just, like, laughing my ass off. The speed at which Professor X goes in between and weaves in and out of yeah. the traffic of the people. That was ridiculous. He, he's gotten quite skilled handling that wheelchair. I was expecting him to start doing, like, flips and trick things and stuff. Four movies. He's had four movies to figure out how to use that wheelchair properly, and damn it, he's finally figured it out. Do you know what actually made me laugh from that scene? Where Wonderful. he goes to Wolverine, from that scene in general where, where Xavier comes in, he goes, you're, the, you're not the only one with special abilities, I think is what he said. I was expecting him to jump out of his chair and go, check this shit out, and start doing Lord of the Dance or some that, shit. that, that, that. Like the Charleston or something like that? <laughs> yeah, because it was just... The way he just came in, is like, you're not the only one with special abilities. Check out this shit! With his legs, just start flailing him about or something. Because... <laughs> so it's putting on the reds. Yeah. Put it on the reds! <laughs> it's just the way that he was coming out, like, you know, presenting himself in it as well. It's just... It was hilarious. I like the end scene. I thought it was awesome. I marked out. Um, and it was it was great. Loved it. 
Oh, I was expecting when he was weaving in and out that we were going to pan over and it was going to be that Magneto was doing it. <laughs> he was just like fucking around. He was just him. pulling him. He was exactly. Like, Eric, stop that. <laughs> Eric, please. Eric, please stop doing that. <laughs> Eric, I'm we Patrick have something Stewart. important to do. Stop Eric, fucking around with me. You already killed Eric, me. Eric, this is, there's time at stake here. We have to go to the days of future past. <laughs> Oh, you naughty bitch. Go. I don't know why he turned into a Sean Connery all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be what happens. They go back in the past, change the future, and then say he turns into Sean Connery. He turned into Sean. I don't know what to tell you, Logan. <laughs> Gene, don't. I don't know. I, can't... I, can't... That was going I don't know any famous X-Men dialogue. It's not like Batman. that They don't have... Bub, James Bub. James, James, Mr. Howlett, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. I was actually doing Magneto, but thanks. Oh, Magneto. <laughs> What's a Sean name? Magneto Connery. <laughs> yes, you never, I've never heard of a magnet before. It's a magnet. Mag fucking Neto. You, you dunce. So I'm really excited about Days of Future Past now. Uh, I keep actually getting more and more excited when I keep finding more and more out about the movie. I mean, uh, when I first heard that they were going to do a sequel that wasn't actually going to include a lot of the cast members, I was just like, duh, don't tell me we're going to introduce 20 new fucking X-Men characters and they're all going to be stupid, like... um, Boom Boom and Sunspot. All the, and all all the B-level and C-level X-Men. <laughs> yeah, Rock Slide, I think <laughs> fucking name. Like, you know, you're going to have that, and you're going to have, like, uh, a couple people that people would recognize. Like, maybe you would throw Forge in there, which uh, I like Forge. That would make some people happy, okay. Yeah, that would make yeah. 12, the 12 people that recognize Forge. <laughs> I mean, that's not... I'm sorry. People are going to be rushing out in masses... <laughs> To go see a movie with Forge in it. I'm sorry. But, but like, no, it's the no, same no, thing with an X Force movie. Like I think the X Force no. is popular, but the X Force is not gonna do Avengers business unless this movie's like the second coming of the Avengers, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you but can't, can't build a uh, you can't build a movie around the fact that they're gonna have like, like Cypher. Yeah, exactly. So I thought they were gonna do that, but then they kept announcing, oh, but we're gonna do Days of Future Past, and it was like, oh, okay, well, now we're going to include other people, and then we're going to include Wolverine going back in time, and we've got um, Boulevard Trask, even though he's played by Peter Dinklage, which is a little bit odd. So yeah, you got that's the a, smallest guy with the Sentinels. The they really shriek the dude that was behind the Sentinels. Yes, but you know what, though? Peter fucking Dinklage is going to play it, so Dink's going to knock the fucking knock that shit out of the park. I, I know, it's that. just... The, the thing is, I have think no, they're going to... Have no doubt in your mind, dude, I'm telling you. The thing is, I think they're going a bit too far with the characters. You're going too far with the characters. Well, I think that they should have kept, kept him and had him be MODOK. I swear to God. He that would have been a lot like better. Him. Yeah, that would have been a lot better. But I think the reason that they went with that, and I hope that they don't do this because it's so stupid, and I'm joking about it. That's the thing, is I'm joking is that they're going to make it that this um, little person built the Sentinels to kind of, like, get rid of his Napoleon complex. Uh, you know, it could be. I could see that happen. That's, that's certainly though. taking a very low road in their writing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but have no fear. The performance will be on point. I thought you were say Underdog was here. <laughs> yeah, no. I was going to say, have no have no fear or doubt in Peter Dinklage's ability to act. I mean... It's anybody... not that. It's just like, you know... For instance, people kicked up a shit fit about Mary Jane. Yeah. For instance. I would have too if Peter also Dinklage was playing her. Stupid. No, but, no it's because <laughs> they cast, like, the, the un-Mary Jane-esque girl as Mary Jane, basically. Um, then... They take trash, uh, Trask, a dude who's hated uh, mutants. He's supposed to be this big, boorish, rather intelligent, but also rather um, 
rather oh what's what can I say rather militant minded individual and then they put Peter Dinklage as him I haven't got an issue with it as much but I'm surprised that comic book geeks haven't gone fucking ape shit over this oh I think if if Peter Dinklage wasn't Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones or I wasn't yeah wasn't Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones there would be people wouldn't know who the hell he is so there probably would have been some uh portion of the population the nerd population up in arms over it but because he's in something that they already like they're gonna cut him some slack well everybody's gonna complain about everything i mean look at what happened with heimdall but he's black like who fucking cares no, heimdall issue, like yeah i didn't have an issue with that because he was he's not that much of a well-known character do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and the same with trask though i mean to an extent like no, 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 no. No, I see. I would say if you change Trask, I'm okay with it. If you change Magneto, then okay. You know what I mean? You could even make. I was joking earlier about Cipher. You could even make Cipher something completely different than what he usually is. As long as he is able to do the whole language thing, then it's just fucking Cipher. I don't care if, like, I didn't care when they had Boulevard Trask and X Men Three played by Bill Duke. Even though Bolivar Trask is in black, like no, you know, so having Peter Dinklage, Peter, uh, Peter Dinklage being a little person, yeah, oh well, you know what, screw it, I don't care. No, it's not that. It's the I, again, as I said, it's it's one of those things. He's been a, he's a main villain, you know, even um, a part of the the whole X Men um, angle that they had at them, you know. <laughs> that I had with Hope and he was even in that and he ended up like turning people to cybernetic sentinels and, and doing loads of shit that was going on there and they even used the character as a supporting character in the last um, two X-Men movies I believe he was somewhere around anyway using Peter Dinklage it's more the fact that because he was so good in Game of Thrones they're throwing him at the first character they can find him which could backfire do you know what I mean? And I really hope that doesn't happen. What do you think, Nikki? Um, you guys were glitching out, so I was just gonna wait until you guys were done. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter Dinklage as Bolivar Trask and your excitement for Days of Future Past. I'm very excited for Days of Future Past, and I'm very indifferent about whatever his freaking name is. I, I don't know a whole lot of information on that particular character. So I can't really have a, an informative opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but um Day to Future Past, um I don't I don't look at news about it solely because I know for a fact my boyfriend will <laughs> and <laughs> he will tell me. And everything I've heard that he has told me about, um I mean, I'm all for it. I'm very excited about it. So, I mean, and I know for a fact he is. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy that it's coming out. I'm really excited. I can't wait to see it. But. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that kind of covers every topic that I wanted to talk about. Is there anything else Wolverine-related that either of you three were interested in discussing? Um, I'd like to see maybe good, more good Wolverine games. I thought the game for Origins was certainly better than uh, the, movie. the movie. Yeah, again, <laughs> not really saying much about the movie. Movie, piece of shit. Uh, but I still, um, I don't, I don't know, because there are very few and far between. There like very few video games derived from um, comic books that I have been a fan of. Minus the whole Lego series, we have to exclude that. <laughs> but I mean, there out of all the Spider-Man games, I think there's like maybe two that I like. Um, uh, I don't know, but if, I think if they continue to make them the like God of War but style games, like like God of War but doused in Wolverine juice, uh, yeah. it'll, and you get you know Hugh Jackman to lend his voice to it, maybe it'll it'll, it'll sell. It'll it'll make your money back. But didn't the Origins game have a different premise from the movie? Uh, it was kind of slightly different. You were kind of like not 
portraying the movie, you were going along with events, playing basically playing the events that you didn't see in the movie. And then you, for some reason, fight Deadpool at the end, which is, I didn't make it, but I heard one of the, it was one of the more aggravating boss fights of the year. What, because of their direction of the character or the actual... Uh... Because of the act, because of the character, because they can make him, like, teleport and all this other shit, and it's just mad. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculousness. But, no, I, oh, I have no complaints with the movie. Again, it was it was good. I did not feel like I wasted my $11. And in my time, I was, I was lucky to go see it at, like, 11.30 on a Friday, so there was, like, four other people in the movie theater with me. So. Not many people that I saw it either. I saw it at 11 o'clock at night, and maybe oh. three rows full of people were filled, and that was about it. Like, Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have the only theater playing it? Uh, I no, have... because I, I went to the um, Debt for Date. Uh, it was the same here. It was basically spur of the moment. Hey, let's go to the movies. It was 11 o'clock showing, and there were like maybe like 10 mm. people in there. That must be, I mean, people must have been really not amped about it because, again, that was such a shitty movie. Well, it did uh, have that going against it. That Origins yeah. was so bad. I mean, it wasn't Ghost Rider too bad, but it was still pretty awful. It, it was still did major damage to the, you know, Wolverine brand, I guess you could say. Um, but overall, I gave the movie um, an 8 out of 10 Wolverine. Uh, solely because there were a couple things that bothered me, mainly things that I've already discussed. But overall, I was very satisfied with the movie, and I, I give it an I give it a solid eight. What do you think, Burhan? I agree with Nikki. I give it um, an eight out of ten. I would have given it a nine. There were some issues, but it wasn't enough to bother me. It wasn't like Iron Man three, where a lot of stuff really annoyed me as a comic book fan. This movie, I felt, as a comic book fan and as a, a movie geek, held me together rather rather well. And it was so funny, actually, that the one person, my brother, went with me. And uh, he's always, he's a big asshole when it comes to movies. He's like, now, I know you talk in these movies. I know you like to talk about what holds the movies together and how well it works and blah, blah, blah. Shut your fucking face. We're sitting there watching the movie and he starts talking. And going on about the characters and everything. And he was really immersed in this film. And I've never seen someone hold anything hold his attention as much. And I felt it was a testament to what this film did. It was very well directed. The writing was there. You could tell how the characters were built up. The acting held everything together. And yes, you had a few bad eggs, but it weren't enough to ruin the movie. Ranking scale, what do you think, Brandon? Oh, I guess if everyone's going eight out of ten, I'll go. I'll go eight out of ten. I would maybe, yeah, yeah it's a, it's a reluctant eight just to you know make the math simple. I guess um, I had no problem with it. Again, better than fucking Origins. Uh, I don't feel like it ripped anything from my childhood, as the saying goes. So uh, yeah, just very solid movie. Good, good, good Japanese cast. Everyone, you know, did their job well. It was funny. He, you know, Hugh Jackman definitely has the comedic aspect of the character finely tuned. Um, I would again, I I would recommend it to anybody who likes Marvel movies. If you are unsure about this movie, go see it and make up your mind. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, I think the um, commercial, the trailers that I saw for it, did not give it justice because we've seen the commercials multiple times and Sam and I just kind of look at each other and we're like eh and then finally um, I know Burhan told me how good it was Tuck told me how good it was and so I'm like alright Sam you want to give it a shot she mostly went on I, my, I trusted, my I, trusted, saying, you know? I trusted opinions from people with similar interests because that trailer did not give it justice whatsoever I was not interested in seeing it whatsoever, whatsoever until about two days ago hmm that's actually a good way to to kind of end that off, because if you guys are interested in the same kind of stuff as, as we are, obviously, with Fanboys Anonymous, then all four of us are going to recommend it. I thought that I'm not necessarily going to give it a, an anything out of a 10 scale, because I didn't really think about that ahead of time, but if you're going to go for like a hit or a miss, 
Definitely a hit. It wasn't as good as the first Iron Man film or Batman Begins, as far as comic book movies go, but it's one of those solid movies that, yeah, it's not going to win an Oscar, but it was fun, and it was entertaining, and I've watched several different movies over the past month, and some of them were huge disappointments, and some of them were in the middle, and some of them were surprisingly good. I mean, I was so fucking annoyed with The Lone Ranger, because it was garbage. I heard, I heard how bad it was. going to be garbage. Absolute I garbage. It. I would tell everybody in the world, do not bother seeing that piece of shit. The best thing about that movie is in the freaking trailers. That's it. You get some comedy moments, but the, the film looks like it drags. Uh, it's no terrible. offense. But yeah, it's, you wouldn't go and see those movies. It's... I don't know. With <clears throat> I think with this particularly, it allowed the character to become who is supposed to be in the comics. Yeah, and I, I think that if you look at a movie like The Lone Ranger, which is supposed to be this like tentpole film that they wanted to build a franchise around, and it was horrible, and then you look at a movie like this, which this is kind of just bridging the gap until. Days of Future Past, and that's really the one that is gonna they're gonna hone in on. Hopefully, and again, I'm gonna be very skeptical about this movie. Hopefully, uh, Brian Singer's directing it. I don't like Brian Singer. I think he raped my childhood more than once. Um, in terms of everything this guy has done since um, Superman Returns, has turned to shit. So we really need to be treading on eggshells. And no one go on about, oh, X-Men uh, First Class. He never directed that. He was executive producer. Mm -hmm. Someone competent directed that. <laughs> so. I would say, out of the movies that I know are out right now, one of them that you should go see is Wolverine. The other one's White House Down, but you can check out the review on fanboysanonymous.com for that. Very similar in the sense that they're both fun, entertaining movies. And if you are interested in that type of a thing, whether you're a comic book movie fan or just an action movie fan, definitely go see Wolverine because it was very entertaining. Um, I'm all out when it comes to all that other kind of stuff. I think everybody else is. So the only thing left to do is to go around and talk some plugs, what articles you guys are doing on fanboysanonymous.com recently, and so on and so forth. So... Brandon. Uh, I'm not doing any articles on Fanboys Anonymous because I'm not that great of a writer. Um, but I do do podcasts on Fanboys Anonymous when my time allows me to. Uh, I also host radio shows such as Sportaholics Anonymous on Wednesdays on blogtalkradio.com slash dream elite. And not one, but two shows on... Uh, oh my. Oh my, yes. Oh my. On... Uh, the Mega Powers Radio, or can we do it as a technically, or is did Payton make up his mind yet? Are we bringing keeping kayfabe to Mega Powers Radio? Uh, I believe we've getting sound bites on there now, so I I believe he probably well, is that always, is a possibility. They've always been on there since we recorded that one episode, so hmm. All right, well, I don't want to make well, we'll, announcements before they're happening, but Geek Speak on Tuesdays, keeping kayfabe on Thursdays, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. Um, out of Brandon All Hope. Out of Brandon All Hope. Apparently nothing, whatever. Fucking just type my name. <laughs> I'm so, Yeah, man. You know, like stuff. Be cool, be kind to yourself, each, yourself and each other. Get your pet spayed and neutered. Get your pet spayed and neutered. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Any other cliches and parodies I could say. Nikki, anything uh, in the works? Um, question, has anyone done an article for the Wolverine movie yet? Because I was going to, but I'm pretty sure somebody's already jumped on it. I Have did a re quick review point. Well, you know what, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll think of something. I have a couple things in mind, um, and I'll definitely let you know. Uh, the Wolverine was going to be my first one, but I automatically assume that someone else is going to get it. Or get to it ahead of me. Um... But with articles, I'll keep you posted. Um, I just recently joined 
I got gameplay, thanks to Burnham. Um, and I plan on popping in and out of uh, the Days Man show. So, I mean, you can always, you know what? <laughs> you can always find me on those two podcasts. Um, none of the wrestling ones, because I only know wrestlers from like the early 90s, courtesy of my father. Um, well, I mean, that's, and that's it, not a bad thing. Eh, 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 I don't know. Um, Sam, the cat, is in the closet. Um, if you want, uh, follow me on Twitter. It's uh, underscore and Mills. And, of course, you can always look up my articles on fanboysanonymous.com and Tumblr, voteforsatan.tumblr.com. That is the best Tumblr name ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to follow me on any of those things, feel free. And last but not least, Burhan. Yes, of course, uh... As always, guys, you can follow me on www.nerdgenius.com to see loads of articles and stuff that I do. I'm currently doing Movie Files 100 Movies in 100 Days on my Nerd Genius YouTube channel. And you can also catch me on 8 p.m. at Mega Powers Radio for I Got Gameplay. This week's episode, we did, well, this, this past week, we did Capcom. And it was a fun filled episode that had a slew of hosts. I enjoyed it immensely and want to do it again. So next week, we're going to be doing Animal Crossing. Yes, we're going to have a game that really locks people in and makes them pass their lifetimes so abruptly that they have no idea what the hell's going on. So we're going to be checking that game out and we're going to have a huge panel hopefully this week again, including, of course, Nikki, who's going to be walking us through the game step by step and explain to us why this thing is so popular. So you guys check that out. Check out everything else that I've been doing. You can follow me on Twitter, at Michael Burhan, uh, or at I Got Gameplay. And also you can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Nerd Genius, or facebook.com forward slash I Got Gameplay. So do that, people. Don't worry about Tony's other stuff. Just make sure you just follow me, because I'm awesome. <laughs> And if you're interested in everything else underneath a mango tree, of course, there's smartoutmoment.com for everything wrestling related, outonlimbs.com for if you want to see my views on the world and me bitching and complaining and harsh opinions about social commentary and everything going along, that kind of a, a fine line. And really driving home the point, fanboysanonymous.com, if you are... The type of person who is not necessarily into comic books and this episode was not for you, we have more than enough that will end up piquing your interest. I mean, there's not only the comic books, but there's the movies in general, video games, television, cosplay, technology, cyber culture, the whole fanboy uh, aspect of the internet, music, celebrity news, collectibles, tabletop games, the arts and whatever random crap we can throw under miscellaneous, I think the only thing under there right now is actually about Wolverine with uh, Tuck reviewing the Berserker Burger from Red Robin. So there's more than enough on fanboysanonymous.com that you guys would love. So check that website out. If you're interested in becoming a writer, send a message through the contact form, and we will try to hook you up with that. We will be having episode 10 next month but i do not know what topic we are going to do so if you have any suggestions leave something in the comments below or send something on the website itself comment on either this page or somebody else's page we'll get ooh, to it eventually ooh, ooh, i have a suggestion i have a suggestion too mm, two possible options what are your suggestions you Me go. is basically can you really be can you really become rich by being a nerd? You can use all the examples, including like you know Apple and Microsoft and all that bullshit. Hmm. What's yours, Brandon? Uh, we could do summer movie review 2013 because we'll, if we do it at the end of August, we will technically be that will be the end of the summer movie season. So we could you know discern what was the best, the worst, what did everybody miss. Hmm. Two possible options here. You never know we, uh, if something's going to come along that way. I know it's not going to be a podcast about kick ass because there's not a whole lot going in, into that. Uh, but, uh, apart from the fact that it kicked ass. <laughs> I was going to make the same exact joke. But stay tuned ah, because I'm sure, you. I'm sure I will have an actual review up about kick ass because that's the next movie that I do plan on seeing. So you can check out the review point for that. 
everything else coming along your way at fanboysanonymous.com. And uh, that should do us in. This meeting should be adjourned. Thank you to everybody doing the show. Thank you to everybody who listened. We will see you next month.